Hello students, and this is a recap of the map of the world that we looked at on Tuesday. And I'm going to go through the same presentation, but I'm going to say it again, and you should be listening to this again because, well, you're going to see these places throughout your whole life, these uh, countries on the map, these continents, and um, yeah, we'll go over it multiple times. So we're looking at the political map. And you'll see political down here, this big word. Where's my mouse arrow? Okay, I have no mouse arrow this morning. Okay, that shows. Well, maybe that's a good thing. So political map is a map with all the countries on it. You can see the country's names. You can see Russia in green and China in yellow and Canada in yellow and the United States. There's my mouse. And um, United States in orange. And this is the way a lot of maps are that we look at. They're political maps. They show the lines of states and countries. Now, these lines are imaginary. You see this line right here between the United States and Canada? On this side, it's yellow. and this side, it's orange. There's not a real line here in, in real life. If you drive your car to this border, you don't see a line. These are political maps. They just show where the countries are. And then we have geographic maps. The geographic maps does not show the countries. It shows what the land looks like. And you can see here, mountains are this bumpy area. You see the bumpy part and you can see the white for the snow. This is high elevation mountains. And then you can see green like in here. These are not mountains. These are going to be flat grasslands. They're going to be um, land that's low in elevation and mostly flat. And then you see, like here, you see the Adirondack Mountains here in the East Coast sticking up. And this is a physical map. And of course, in case I failed to mention, all of this blue is the ocean. Most of planet Earth is ocean. 70% of it is water. So there it is, the two kinds of maps, political and geographic. And all the slides that are coming up have both of them. There is a political map for every continent and a geographic map for each continent. We'll now review the directions. We have north, south, east, and west. And as the brilliant Elena McInerney told me, educated me, this you can remember with N S E W. A way to remember this is never eat soggy waffles. Or if you look up here, never eat soggy waffles. The N E S W is for never, the E is for eat, the S is for soggy, and this W is for waffles. And it's a silly little sentence, but it can be very helpful to help you remember. Thank you, Elena, for introducing that to me. I never knew about that. So on a map, north is up, south is down, east is over on this side, and west is on the left side. So let's apply that to our Earth. Now, in outer space, north, south, east, and west is very confusing because in reality, Earth is a ball. It is not a flat map like we look at maps. You can't have, unless you have a, the globe in your pocket and you take out the globe to, uh, to reference it, we need a flat map. So anyway, north, south, east, and west, they work when you're looking at a flat map. They don't work so great on the globe. So here's our first continent. It is your continent, North America. And this has the three prominent countries are Canada, United States, and Mexico. These are the three big countries of North America. And notice also big yellow Alaska out here. And that's also yellow because Alaska belongs to the United States. Even though they're not touching, they are part of the same country. Alaska is one of the United States of the United States of America. Mexico is also a very big country. Very big and um, this makes up North America. And we call it North because it is in the northern part of the Earth, the globe. If you look here, here is North America. It's up near the top of the Earth. It's in the North. And that brings us to our next continent, South America, which is down south of 
of North America. It's down here. And here's a look at it. There's the shape of South America. Easy to remember by, by the shape. It is unique. No other landmass looks like this. You can see on the physical map we have these Andes Mountains, very tall mountains where the llamas live. And then you have this big green area, which is the Amazon jungle, the Amazon basin. And yes, the countries are over here. You don't see the mountains in this picture. You see the lines that are imaginary lines. They're not really there, but they show us where each country starts and ends. So the big country in South America is Brazil. This is the most massive country, but other very important countries too, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, lots of other countries as well. Oh, and I didn't review the oceans. We want to look at oceans as well. So, so South America touches the Pacific Ocean, which is over here, and it touches the Atlantic Ocean. And I want to tell you that there are, there's really just one ocean, if you look. Okay, we call this the Atlantic Ocean over here. We call this the Pacific Ocean over on this side, but in reality, all the water is together. It's not separated at all. The, the water flows around all the, plant, the entire planet. Water can flow from the Pacific Ocean and come around the corner. And now that same water is in the Atlantic Ocean. And then it can flow around the other side and go into the Indian Ocean as well. So there's really only one big ocean. What we call we have names for them because, well, the oceans are so big. So we have Pacific Ocean on this side, Atlantic Ocean on that side, and then we have the same thing for South America. We have the Pacific Ocean over here, Atlantic over here. That brings us to Europe. Europe is um, the, made of several small countries. None of these countries are really, really big. The United States is probably big, as big as all of these put together. So there's Europe, and you have the, the Atlantic Ocean over here, and then up here in the north, you have the Arctic Ocean. Very cold water. In fact, right up here where my mouse is, that is probably made of a lot of ice. There's probably ice up here. It's the beginning of the North Pole. It's up there really high. So those are the two oceans for the continent of Europe. Next, we have the continent of Africa. Again, remember the shape. This is easy to remember because of its shape. This has a rounded bottom. South America has that sharp point on the bottom. This has a more round bottom for Africa. And you can see very distinctly in the geographic map, look at all this desert. This is the Sahara Desert, the famous desert. So Egypt is up here. The pyramids are right here in the Sahara Desert. Very, very hot here. And so it's very hot in this section of Africa. But if you go a little bit south, if you go down, the weather changes. It's not as hot. And many more plants and other life grows and lives here. There's a lot of animals and plants because the weather is some um, it's very, it's almost tropical. It's, <clears throat> it's warm all the time and it rains a lot so things can grow. And then down here in the south, it gets a little bit dry again. And um, yeah, so there are the parts of Africa. And you can tell just by looking at the physical map, um, the geographic map, what these regions are like. We move on to our next continent, which is Asia. And Asia is the biggest land mass on Earth. This is bigger than North America, bigger than Africa, bigger than everything. And one different thing I want to point out that I didn't mention last time is that Asia is connected to Europe. You know, it's hard to decipher all these pictures, but this that I'm circling right now with my mouse, this is Europe. And it's touching Asia. All of this is Asia over here. And it's really one and the same. They're all connected. But we call this section Europe because it's a very different place. All these different languages and small countries and cultures that have been around for thousands of years. And it's quite different from the cultures and countries of, um, of Asia right here. China and India and Russia, quite different. 
else there. The Asian landmass, the biggest landmass on Earth. Then we get to a continent that is also just one country. I'll remind you that this is many, 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 many countries. Every color you see is a different country. We have India, China, Burma, Thailand, Malaysia, Mongolia, Russia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Iran, Saudi Arabia. All these are different countries. But you get to Australia, it's just one country. It is Australia. That's it. It's a continent and a country. And look at this Australian map. They show the different areas of Australia. And this is just like we've been learning. This is Western Australia. You see that word West? And just like our compass right here, there's a W and you point in this direction. This is the West. Then we have the Northern Territory. You see that word North in there because it's up on the map. It's the Northern Territory. Then down here we have South Australia. This is another part of Australia that is in the South. So the Northern part is in the top, Southern part is in the bottom. And then over here we have another South, New South Wales, another part of Australia that is in the South. It's down, just like this arrow that I can't point to, that's pointing down. There it is, north, west, south, and this would also be, this would be East Australia over here, even though there's not a region with that name. Finally, we come to this mysterious continent of Antarctica, the South Pole. Now the South Pole is just one place. Do you see this dot on the map? And you see all these longitude lines pointing to this dot, See all these lines pointing down. They all meet right in this spot. That's because this is the South Pole. This is, it, this is where the Earth turns on its axis. If you were to put a pole through the Earth and watch it spin around, the pole would stick out right there. And there are pictures of the South Pole. I think I showed my class last year. Maybe I can show you guys again this year. But this is the South Pole, and nobody lives here except for the scientists. That's it. There's, uh, there's no McDonald's, there's no Costco, and um, you're not going to be able to make a life out here. There's no houses. It's just too cold. People don't live out here. The only people who live out here, they live here for a short time, for a few months or something, in order to study Earth sciences. So there it is, Antarctica, and it is land. This is not an iceberg floating in the ocean. This is land. There's rocks, there's dirt, there's even some little tiny plants in some places, but not everywhere. And it's just covered with snow and ice. But there are mountains out here. You can see pictures and video of people going out here and going up mountains. Pretty interesting place. And its ocean is the Southern Ocean. And this is surrounded by the Southern Ocean. This is all Southern Ocean because it is at the bottom of the earth. And that is how I will finish this presentation by going back to our picture of the earth. And you can't see it down here, but Antarctica is down at the bottom. This, the white, is just clouds. But if you could go down around the corner a little bit, you would see Antarctica at the very bottom, that very cold, remote place where nobody lives. So that was a tour of the seven continents and the oceans that they're connected to. Your job is to learn all of these shapes and remember what they look like so that if I give you a map, you would know that this is North America and you would know right away that that's South America and be able to label Europe and Africa and Asia and Australia and Antarctica. And thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit more about how the world map works and some of the continents and oceans that are part of our planet.